You see how my teeth glow? You know that's ice. I 40, 30 that price. And I keep the heater right below the Gucci G buckle. Tooley make your cruelish G buckle. F your gun. F your dog. Somebody need to get me muzzled. The boy is wretched. Avoid my presence. And in this game, I'm moving like I'm Shaq in a lane. It's hard to check them. They all respect them. Money cars infected me. So now I got a ball even if it takes all that's left of me. And all that's right of me is my squad gorilla team. Young killers always Skrilla dreams. You don't want to wake us up on the wrong side of the bed. Slide lead to the wrong side of your head. Should have went with your right mind. Riders come out at nighttime. Pipeline a hollow to your wife's spine. I'm like Sean. I'm busting for my nigga, and I'm taking the charge like I like time. You just make sure my daughter life fine. Despite crime, my pad was tough. I had to scuff. Too cute to work in the checkout line. So I sat at home, bagging up. But as soon as they got their checks, they came to check out mine. And I was working the checkout line. Big guns with long necks to protect our shine. Lot of cheese and good trees to connect our minds. Since the feds just love to detect our shine, I like my paint a little wetter, my rims a little wider, my seats a little foxish, my floors a little ostrich. I'm focused, but my then got snobbish. I'm focused, <laughs> CMB repolish. Switched a few niggas, flipped a few niggas. I might miss a few niggas, forget a few niggas, I don't hear from you niggas, but your niggas still here for you niggas, I kill for you niggas, I am more real than you niggas, it's my court, this is Wimbledon nigga, I put the tent up to the temple of niggas, disfigure a nigga, you don't wanna go at the flow cause I jiggle a nigga, sit down clown, the best thing that happened to New Orleans since the oil spilled downtown. I got some rounds with me, I got my rounds with me, I got a pound with me, I got a pound in me. I ride around in Bentley's windows up, I play the salad like put them Playstations and them Nintendos up. You try to copy this shit, you get your pencil stuck. There's a drop of real life in every sentence, son. Shit, boy. Dwayne Michael Carter Jr., a.k.a. Lil Wayne, born September 27, 1982. Before we go any further in this video, you have to understand that Lil Wayne to me is still one of the greatest, and I don't use that word lightly, one of the greatest rappers of all time. His first three albums where he was in the heart of his sound that was before its time in the late 90s, early 2000s era will always be classic in my opinion. Then into the era he held the torch as the best rapper in the game from Carter 1 through Carter 4 was like Prime Wayne in all his glory where no one could touch him as an MC and the fire he blazed throughout music and entertainment that literally pushed hip hop to another level from 2004 through 2008. Rebirth and I Am Not a Human Being were like an interlude to me if you look at his discography as an album tracklist where he was searching for a way to take his career to another level. He returned to prime form with Carter 4, which is still to me Lil Wayne's most complete album, although Carter 2 is still my favorite Wayne album where he was in the perfect zone of hunger to be the best while flexing his ascendance. He staked his claim as the best in the game on Carter 2 from me, with 3 being his most commercially accepted album, selling over 6 million copies to date. He's had countless Grammy nominations for his albums and singles in between, along with 5 wins including Best Rap Album for The Carter 3, Best Rap Solo Performance for Amelie, and Best Rap Song for Lollipop as his solo wins. Speaking of his mixtape collection, no artist has one better than Lil Wayne. Whenever Wayne is in free form like he does with these tapes, it's prime Wayne skill-wise, showing to date there's no punchline rapper better than Wayne from past to present. There's a handful of rappers when I listen to them, I think, wow, how do you even think of that? His punchline bars are second to none in audacity alone. Like what could even make him think to say that, and in the way he puts it, is just unmatched. 
So much so that when I hear another artist with this gift, I always think, wow, he has the Lil Wayne characteristic. Artists like Fabulous. I've always thought, how did Fab even think that? But with Fab, there's more of a social relevance to his bars. Like whatever huge incidents happening in the culture, Fab will have a rhyme about it next week. Two chains. Many sleep on chains bars, but he has some very clever wordplay I know is inspired by Wayne. Speaking of slept on punchline bars, Big Sean. Another, I'm like, wow, how clever was that? Drake, Jay Z. Eminem impresses me more with how he uses words and his ability to fit certain ones into the bars like a puzzle piece, but not at all as clever and witty as Wayne. As you can see, I hold Wayne to the highest level, which is why when I see him today, it baffles me he's having the career he is now, where he's not that old, certainly doesn't look or dress out of place within the culture, but his weight doesn't have the same carry as I think it should at this point in the game, and here are three reasons why. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth Music. Let's get it. Lil Wayne is a New Orleans rapper that began taking music serious as early as 14 years old after dropping out of school to pursue it. His witty bars, seemingly before their time, can be credited to the high-level schools he went to before dropping out that he excelled as an honor student in. Wayne's backstory of his father leaving and his stepfather credited by Wayne as his actual father, along with the time he shot himself in the chest playing with a gun at home, are all well-documented parts of Wayne's life. Today, I'd like to focus on three areas Wayne could have been a better quote-unquote rapper, not in skill, but his career as an MC, and where I think he should be among hip-hop today. Like hinted at, this doesn't mean Wayne didn't have an outstanding career, and isn't held as a top 10 rapper ever for some, most definitely myself included. Stunt number 1. Feud with Cash Money More specifically, his feud with Birdman. To me, this is the biggest stunt to Lil Wayne's growth that took the allure away from him as a boss in the game and showed a helpless, vulnerable side to Wayne that he never recovered from. It took so much time also from Wayne in the most inopportune time when acts like Drake, Kanye West and others were right on his heel in a race for best rapper in the game. Wayne and Birdman's history is confusing just as much as it is interesting that the two, although like father and son, have gone through the legal battles they have, all for freedom on Wayne's part and a show of want for control on Birdman's end that all but killed Wayne's career. Wayne, as you know, signed to Birdman and Cash Money as a young child basically and I'm sure didn't understand his contract at the time. What it seems is that contract had very specific wording in it that has kept Wayne hostage almost 30 years. The feud first went public and had real world consequences for Wayne around the time he was ready to drop his highly anticipated Carter 5 album. For whatever reason, many think it's because back in 2014, Wayne wasn't ready to sign off on an extension to his cash money contract and so Birdman continued to push Carter 5 back even with the success of lead single Believe Me featuring the hottest rapper in the game not named Wayne in Drake. A joint tour was scheduled, Google apparently proposed to back the album, and fans couldn't wait to get their hands on it. Still with this demand, Birdman and Cash Money chose control as Wayne voiced his frustrations to no avail. That one album being delayed like that gave entrance to Drake to take over, along with allowing a carbon copy at the time in Young Thug to enter, as he even trolled Wayne's release with his own Barda 5 mixtape, which was first named Carta 5, Thug intended to release in part to bring awareness to Wayne not being able to, and to troll his way into free press. Wayne later sued Cash Money for $51 million for breach of contract and to release he and his artists from the label. In the years following, he'd go on to diss Birdman repeatedly at shows and on social media, but Birdman didn't flinch and reassured everyone anywhere he could be heard that he wasn't a problem when he clearly was. Wayne's a workaholic. 
If his music isn't coming out, it's label issues. There's the alleged throwing drink on Wayne at his show, the alleged attempt on Wayne's life reportedly including Young Thug, all going on while behind the scenes, we saw Wayne and Birdman together at parties and on stage. Weird, I know. This feud held Wayne's creativity back and caused him to lose traction he'd never get back. Carta 5 released seven years after Carta 4. Stunt number two, not embracing newer artists. First day that nigga got down, didn't dap, didn't dap me up. Left my pimping hanging. One time I dapped him up, this is how he dapped me. That one like, I'm like, hey, listen, bro. Sure, you see Wayne on just about everyone's song nowadays, but in the late 2000s and early 2010s, when Wayne was hot, it wasn't so for newer artists. Wayne is famous for saying that he never listens to rap music outside himself in order to keep his creativity fresh and uninspired, except by him. Most famously, Young Thug in particular, when he first came out, Wayne didn't reach for Thug's extended hand, and it led to Thug trolling Wayne and possibly even hijacking Wayne's sound. So much so that Wayne mysteriously began sounding like Young Thug, with more and more singing and an even weirder voice inflection than he already has. That one move could have extended Wayne's reign, taking him into the next generation on Young Thug's back. Instead, he repeatedly ignored Thug and it made him seem old and unwilling to hand over the torch. Of course, Thug became a staple in hip-hop, which made Lil Wayne fall even further, as now, why does the youth need to know who Wayne was when they have their very own? It's not that Wayne didn't collab, cause Wayne did, like I said, he was a workaholic. But he seemed out of touch when it came to newer artists and that hurt his shelf life. We see Drake, Jay-Z, Kanye all use newer artists to carry them into what's new and Wayne didn't do that soon enough and it hurt him. Stunt number three, meaningful music. No matter how hot an artist is now, his music legacy will always be determined by the quality of his work as far as how long it'll last the test of time. For me, this is why I love early Wayne, up to I'd say Carter 4 without rebirth and I am not a human being. Everything else to that point, Wayne made meaningful music. Carter 3 was commercial and did have songs that won Grammys but have no substantial value at all like Lollipop and even a Millie. But songs like Mr. Carter, Shoot Me Down, Tie My Hands all showed a deeper level to Wayne that was greatly appreciated. But nowadays, Wayne seems to focus on bars that you can throw away after use as although he's flipping crazy words and is as witty as he's ever been, the song itself has no connection to the listener and I think that makes Wayne forgettable and obvious as a rapper. We know what a new Wayne song is going to sound like. An okay beat with Wayne going super saiyan in his bars, possibly no hook as he amazes your mind all the way through with clever line after clever line. At the end, you say, damn, Wayne is nice. But again, at the end, you're so drained, you rarely go back to the song. Just Wayne being Wayne again, okay, what else dropped today, kind of feel. Wayne can rap, we know this, but can he make a relevant, deep, still creative and entertaining song of recent? All in all, Wayne is still in my top 5, just me. I grew up with and on Wayne's music, so just that connection puts him above most artists I like. He's one of the most raw talented artists I've ever seen, along with Kanye West, Jay-Z and I'd say Tupac Shakur. He has a look and personality that transcends eras, yet you don't get why his influence today isn't greater in rap like it was. Lil Wayne is supposed to be one of the bosses in the game now, with his own prominent label with successful artists releasing yearly. Yes, Drake and Nicki Blue, but at what efficiency? That's two artists when there's countless under Wayne that never seen daylight. This is why whatever happened with he and Birdman was so important. He took that boss allure away from Wayne and revealed that even he has contract issues, showing he's not the businessman we expected him to be at this point. He still had a tremendous career, just that believe it or not, it could have been better. 
Salute to Wayne. Much, much, much respect. One of my favorite artists of all time. But for these reasons, even Lil Wayne's growth was stunted. It's your boy Jay-Z, Stunted Growth Music, and I'm out.